First, I'd like to state that this has nothing to do with any particular person or school at all. I'm not trying to pick on anybody or, or start any trouble here. Uh, also, this problem isn't just with Taiji. It, it actually seems more so prevalent with Bagua applications that I see or Aikido applications. Um, those are two other internal arts. Those uh, applications seem to be pulled off externally or internally in the same way that I present uh, these appli Taiji applications. Also, this video is not to represent how I think these applications should be done. Basically, I take common ways that I've seen these applications done and just explore those ideas from an external point of view versus an internal point of view. Um, I feel that in Taiji, applications uh, are based on principle, not on pattern. Uh, so I practice a little bit differently than what we're seeing here, but I just thought I would explore this, and I hope it sparks some ideas in you. And um, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. Bye. Hi. So a small pet peeve of mine is when people show uh, Taiji fighting applications in videos. Um, I, I enjoy looking at fighting applications, but in a sense, other than the fact that the movements come from the Taiji form, I don't know why they're called Taiji fighting applications. And I'm saying this because the applications are done in such a way that they would work anyway. And what I mean by that is, even with no internal strength being used at all, the applications would still generally work. It's because um, you're basically gaining superior position. Um, uh, and then there's, there's also elements of timing and speed to go on. Uh, all things are which are important in a real fight. I'm, I'm not saying that in a fight that you should not use superior position. Of course you should. But if that's the way you practice, in other words, uh, you know, if you're learning Tai Chi and at the same time you're learning these applications, especially before you've developed good internal power, then you're not really learning anything other than how to pull up these techniques externally. Uh, I'll give you a quick example with uh, uh, a typical method that people use to employ a single whip. So let's say Robert here is coming in with a punch uh, and his legs forward. So I, I see this a lot of times where um, this fist will get parried and grabbed, okay? So you've, they've, they've stepped kind of off the line and parried and grabbed. So, and be strong here. So I'm parrying and grabbing and it's having a little bit of effect on them. Uh, the next thing they do is crowd the person's space. Okay, so I'm holding here and um, coming under and I'm stepping in, crowding his space into the stance. So I'm already breaking his balance externally, no internal power used at all. I have a control, I'm having control here. It's not good that he can just whack me, but that's besides the point. Um, uh, and um, breaking his stance with my leg and start to crowd his body. And if I follow through with this, um, looks like, and I'll do slow once, I'll come in, come across, and that, okay? Um, if I do it faster from an external point of view, I'm just, I don't want to do, if I do it too hard, you'll actually fall because of the way I break your stance. But I'll, I won't do that. So I just come in, okay? And that happens. Now, in uh, doing the same kind of thing, applying it, with internal strength isn't going to look a whole lot different because I'm still grasping, I'm crowding them, breaking their stance, uh, moving them. Uh, it may look a little different, but it should feel a lot different to the other person. So, um, and I'll do this two different ways. Um, but also, multi-step Tai Chi uh, applications are interesting because here, whereas externally, I'm, I'm grabbing and doing this. If I'm doing this more internally, uh, when I do that, that should have a big effect. Now, it doesn't have to, but the fact is, just a grab like that internally will have a larger effect on him. So, um, it makes it so the rest of the application, I'm not really set up for it. So, I have to do this in a different way, where I'm turning his arm, but I don't want to control his body. So, I have to, I have to just grab and not let that large movement happen while that happens. Uh, same thing when I come in with the stances. If, if uh, I have good hold of this, um, but, I, but I come in and just like this, he'll start moving more and he's already out of sorts, even though I didn't do much. 
um, by using internal strength as I crowd them, it has a bigger effect. So in order to get the last part of the move on, I have to kind of shortchange what I'm doing here, have to shortchange what I'm doing there. And by shortchange, I mean I can't really, I can't feed the power back into them as I'm going. I have to neutralize this down into myself without having it return to control him. And as I come in here, I have to continue neutralizing, um, dissipating in this area, not back at him, so that I can get into this. And then I could open up um, internally. So let's, let me show you what that might look like. And I'll do it slowly. I'll just come in, and all this is very <coughs> light. And then I open up a little bit, and off he goes. Um, you could do variations on this where, as I'm coming in, I could create a more tension in here. So I want to be loose about this, but I want to have a tension here. If this tension's here, uh, built up here and here, right, and then I just open, it'll start to go. Um, if I do it quickly, he'll go more. Um, so basically, I'm getting around him, not applying things back to him. I'm coming in with this here, um, getting control, but I'm not doing anything with the control that I have, in other words. Same thing with what my legs do. And then just let go of everything. Um, you could twist more, whatever. There's all sorts of things you could do with this. Come up higher, higher, and then down as you do this. Um, but the point is, uh, it's different to this person um, when you're doing it using internal, even though it doesn't look a whole lot different, especially if you're doing it fast. I mean, if you're doing the external stuff fast and, and you come in and you, and, you, and you crowd them, you know, a lot of movement happens, but it's uncomfortable. I mean, that was uncomfortable for me. It's uncomfortable in my arm, in here. I mean, we're basically clashing. There's impacts. I'm having to push up. Um, and it should feel kind of crummy for you, too, you know? If I come in internally, it's all, it's all softer, right? Yeah. Um, and that's because I'm not doing anything with these initial parts. It's only when I get to you do I start to open up and just let you kind of go off me. I'm not following through because I don't want to boom into the wall or something. But like I said before, any one of these parts can be done such that when you're coming in, that this is really controlling. And so if you're really controlling from this first part, when you're, when you're stepping in, it's uh, going to be clumsy like that because he's off position. You're not just going to step in like that. If he was, uh, if I'm doing that and he's here, then I have to change how I'm stepping and pay attention. I mean, you're supposed to be paying attention anyway, but you can't just go through the pattern. You know, and as you come in, you have to just, um, as you sink here, control here, you could straighten it back up and then finish that off. Um, and that's, so that's what I'm saying. And you, you wouldn't find that out by doing it externally. By doing this externally, um, everything gets locked up. It's stiff. I can move this. Um, it moves this. It's not going to move his legs unless I pull really hard. Um, with the internal, um, as I do this, everything's going to, just going to start going. Um, so you got to do any kind of application in Tai Chi that takes more than two steps. Because um, here's a step, right? And here's a step. Anything that happens more than two steps, you're going to have a hard time pulling off the third step if you didn't control how you did the first two. In other words, even if, if I didn't control the second step on this, if I was right here and came, by the time I step in, he's going from that. Um, and so I never get to go across his body and twist open because this is hammering him. Um, and I'm not even stepping, I'm not even hitting him hard. It's just the fact that I'm landing rootedly. So those first two steps, you got to pretty much dissipate everything if you want to pull up the third step. You have to... <coughs> You have to let these two not affect them so that you can do something with that last part. Um, I guess that's about it. But the point is, doing those kind of applications, it's difficult to show anyone 
that it, it's difficult to show anybody that you have skill because the application could get pulled off anyway. You could do it anyway from an external point of view. And anybody that's been studying martial arts for a while should be able to figure out what the applications are anyway. I mean, it becomes, you know, if, you, if you've been around martial arts, it's obvious. Okay, I'm grabbing here, I'm doing this, braiding this free, pushing down, whatever. Anybody could come up with that kind of stuff. So showing Taiji fighting applications that look nothing like external, that just look like external techniques, doesn't show a lot. Um, if you want to do that, maybe you could show some contrasts, like I just did, show a little bit of how it's going to look externally, how it's going to look internally, which isn't going to be a whole lot different. Um, but talk about it, you know. Uh, there's definite things that you could feel that's different, that, you know, that, that goes on differently about that. Um, and, you know, that applies with anything in the form. Not, you know, that's an easy example. Uh, another popular thing that people show all the time is this, like, uh, for the opening move, like if you have me up here, um, is that people break this and pull down and push away, right? Be strong about this, and I'll do this more externally. So they break up, go down, and push back, you know? Or they'll get their body into it more and, and go down and up more. <laughs> but the point is, these kinds of things, because you're um, getting somebody that's kind of staying there to begin with, and, and you keep changing the directions, and um, moving in a circle, and I just added a step there, it means it's all going to work externally anyway. There's nothing really, there's nothing internal about that. If I do this um, more internally, where, oh. <laughs> it, you know, you, you do use a different kind of power. It does something altogether different to the person, and you have a lot more control. Um, so if somebody's looking carefully, they can tell, well, that looks like he was using something there. It didn't just look external. It looked more internal. Um, but like I said, the applications, most of them can be pulled off. Because any good martial art is going to go for superior positioning. Okay? Um, once you have superior positioning, you're at an advantage. And so your techniques will tend to work better, even if they're done externally. Um, I guess that's all I have to say. I'm not really making a point other than what I was talking about there. Um, it's just a pet peeve. Anyway, uh, keep putting videos out. If you have some applications that you like to share, please share them. Um, and it'd be nice to see how you would contrast them externally versus internally just to show the differences in, in the type of power that gets used, not the fact that you gained a superior position, you crowded them and knocked them down. Um, all right, thank you for watching. Bye.